Hello, good, evening, good morning and welcome to CNBC Africa's special live broadcast here from the ANC's 53rd elective conference in Mangahong in Bloemfontein, South Africa. Welcome also, of course, to the rest of the continent. We are starting today off with a series of breakfast discussions on economic policy that will be debated at this conference. Now, all the attention has, of course, been taken up by the um, power struggles in the African National Congress, the battles for leadership, but the big discussions are, of course, the critical issues that the ruling party will have to debate to address the triple challenges of unemployment, inequality, and poverty and job creation. Now, today, we will kick off with South Africa's Trade and Industry Minister, Rob Davies, who will be taking us through the main tenets of the African National Congress's trade and industrial policy. Minister Rob Davies, can we give him some applause, please? Thank, Thank you. you. Well, thank you very much, uh, Karima. And uh, I want to start by thanking the Progressive Business Forum and uh, CNBC Africa for this opportunity. Uh, I was asked to speak really about what we have done to give effect to the ANC resolutions on uh, trading pol and industrial policy matters uh, as they were outlined at the uh, 52nd uh, National Congress in Polokwane. And essentially, I think that uh, without trying to read them all through, the main gist of them was that we said in Polokwane that the creation of decent work opportunities uh, should be the primary focus of our economic policies. And then we said that uh, a well-resourced and active industrial policy was a key tool uh, in, ter in terms of uh, achieving uh, that main objective. There were a number of other points which are relevant to our portfolio, including that we must uh, increase the opportunities to participate in the productive sectors of our economy economy uh, for uh, small businesses and for historically disadvantaged people. Uh, and that, I think, uh, goes to the areas of enterprise development and of uh, broad-based black economic empowerment. Let me start by saying a, a few words about the context, because I think the context has been incredibly important. Uh, in the 2008-2009 period when the global economic crisis, uh, the first wave of it, made itself felt in the South African economy, uh, we lost a million jobs. 200,000 of those, or 20 percent, were in manufacturing. Uh, manufacturing only contributes about 14% uh, to the GDP, uh, so 20% job losses means a more than proportional job loss in the manufacturing sector. And this came on top of, I think, a number of indications that the manufacturing sector in South Africa was actually quite fragile. Uh, that itself, I think, was an indication uh, of, uh, of that particular uh, reality. And yet manufacturing is absolutely critical for any economy that seeks to develop. Manufacturing is uh, the sector where you add value to the products of nature. Manufacturing uh, is what has driven uh, so-called emerging economies moving from underdevelopment uh, to becoming uh, this uh, term emerging economies. Manufacturing is something which uh, those countries which continued to promote it in the developed world uh, withstood the global economic crisis better than those that did not. And I think right now we see that many countries are, are now seeking to strengthen uh, their manufacturing sectors. So manufacturing remains a critical sector uh, in South Africa. And I think that this was the, uh, the basis on which, within the framework of the new growth path, the Industrial Policy Action Plan was launched. And I think that what we have succeeded in doing in the course of this administration is to institutionalize an annual uh, three-year rolling industrial policy action plan. The important point about the Industrial Policy Action Plan is it's not a framework document, it's not a vision document, it's an action plan. It contains uh, specific uh, actions that are required within specific time periods, and part of the discipline of implementing the IPAP is that we have regular uh, sessions where we look at the state of implementation and we uh, look at the uh, measures that are required to unblock uh, the various things uh, that are not uh, 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 working as they should do, uh, at least on the, the time frame uh, that they should do. So let me say a couple of key features. I think that what the uh, last few years of IPAP has taught us is that where we have partnered with manufacturing, 
where we have intervened and supported manufacturing, I think we can see that the results are a lot better than in those parts of manufacturing where we have been less active. For example, what led the recovery in the manufacturing sector was the automotive sector. We spent about 2.6 million uh, rand, uh, to billion rand rather, uh, to support uh, uh, the uh, investments in the, in the uh, in automotive sector under the automotive in investment scheme, uh, which we in fact uh, 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 is part of the automotive production development program, but we brought it forward. Uh, so it came into force before uh, the rest of the automotive production and development program. And that uh, uh, led to investments of at least 15 billion rand uh, in both uh, automotive uh, assemblers uh, as well as uh, component uh, manufacturers. And I think we can see that the investments are continuing. Uh, one of the uh, recent ones is uh, um, a, an investment of 100 million US dollars uh, by the first auto works of China, uh, which is the first uh, Chinese uh, automotive company to invest in South Africa. Uh, we've also uh, been uh, bringing the program into the realm uh, of uh, uh, commercial and uh, uh, vehicles uh, and the minibus uh, program, which we uh, uh, introduced has reversed a trend where uh, since 2007 uh, all the minibus taxis in South Africa uh, have been uh, imported. And I think we can see that we, we, we've uh, supported increasing exports, uh, exports of motor vehicles of 280,000 units uh, projected to increase to 361,000 units next year, uh, component exports of 40 billion rand with a projected 13% increase next year. Uh, we've seen um, uh, uh, the investment uh, pipeline, uh, as I've indicated, uh, continuing. In the clothing, textile, leather and footwear industry, we took uh, a, I think, fairly bold step to end the uh, then existing support program, which was having a perverse effect uh, on the industry. We offered a, an incentive based on exports, uh, and you got a duty credit. These duty credits were being used to import more products and compete with uh, productive activity. We turned that into production incentives, uh, where we uh, diagnosed that the main problem in the industry uh, was lack of investment to raise competitiveness, to raise productivity. And in fact, I think we've seen that uh, as a result of these programs, the competitiveness improvement program, the production incentive, uh, we've seen that uh, we have uh, supported uh, around about um, uh, uh, 1.2 billion uh, rands worth of, 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 of support programs, uh, uh, supporting uh, the creation or saving of, uh, of, ne of nearly 50,000 jobs. Uh, we've seen, I think, some important important developments in which uh, retailers have started to work with clothing manufacturers uh, to realize the benefits of uh, the local uh, production being closer to the market uh, in the form of fast fashion. Uh, we've seen retailers like Foschini and Edcon working with manufacturers. Uh, we've seen uh, in the footwear sector, which was an industry which was almost dead, uh, we've seen an increase in uh, production from 52 million shoes uh, to uh, something of, the, of a target of 100 million shoes uh, over the next three years, uh, with approximately uh, 32,000 people uh, being employed uh, in that sector. We've seen a number of important developments and investments in agro-processing, where we see agro-processing as a, um, a sector which can drive agricultural production. Uh, one of the uh, major uh, new uh, initiatives uh, we launched uh, uh, earlier this month in Durban uh, was uh, a project to roll out uh, small maize mills so that we can, in fact, take a new technology uh, in this uh, very important foodstuff in South Africa uh, and uh, make this accessible uh, to smaller players uh, in the industry. One of the major areas where we want to develop as we move forward is in the area of uh, uh, metals fabrication, capital goods, transport equipment. Uh, 
this is a, a sector includes a number of engineering type activities where uh, we have in the past had capability as South Africa and certainly we have the potential to build on that. The infrastructure development program, which has been identified as the main counter-cyclical response, the main way in which we can move forward in our economy, needs to ensure that a larger proportion of those inputs than we have been accustomed to in the past come from local uh, production, and in fact that the infrastructure development becomes a tool uh, of local industrialization. And so one of the tools that we have developed is that we have completely recast our, um, our procurement system. We have introduced uh, localization regulations across the public sector. The main uh, tool that we have developed here is uh, designations. Uh, at certain percentages of uh, inputs uh, procured by government departments and public entities will have to come from local manufacturing. We have used uh, those designations in areas like rolling stock, where some very important uh, contracts were recently awarded, uh, railway rolling stock, buses, uh, electricity pylons, uh, medicines, uh, or so-called uh, oral solid dosages tablets and so on procured by the public uh, health system. Uh, we're going to be following this with another set of designations uh, around office furniture. Uh, we've already introduced things like foodstuffs uh, and clothing, workwear. Uh, and I think that we're beginning to, to try to use this as a tool to promote greater procurement uh, of, uh, of local products uh, from South African sources. There are still many, many challenges in manufacturing. The manufacturing sector remains very vulnerable to a number of pressures arising from the global economic crisis. We've uh, tried to complement our work in this regard uh, by uh, building uh, a stronger support measure for small businesses in the form of incubation programs. We have changed the, uh, the basis of black economic empowerment through the proposed new codes so that we can emphasize those parts of black economic empowerment which actually result uh, in uh, support for uh, productive entrepreneurial activity uh, by black people. These, I think, is a, is a, is a very, very quick summary uh, of some of the work we've done uh, in the industrial policy area. Uh, as I said, we're also responsible for other areas. They include the trade policy, uh, which I won't go into now, except to say uh, that our major focus in trade has been on deepening regional integration in Africa across existing regional economic communities, uh, where we are taking particularly <coughs> emphasis on the SADC Comesa East African Community process which can create a large uh, regional market in, Afri in the African continent, sufficient, we believe, uh, to support and sustain an industrialization effort across the continent, uh, not just uh, uh, in South Africa. So South Africa, I think that we, 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 we see achievements, but we also see enormous challenges as we move ahead. So let me stop at this point, and uh, uh, let's uh, engage in the uh, Q&A. Thank you very much. Well, of course, that was the Trade and Industry Minister, Mr. Rob Davies. We're going to take a short break now, but when we return, we will continue our conversation with him and unpack some of the critical issues and challenges relating to industrial and trade policy in South Africa.